this is the UCD Postgraduate Virtual Open Day for the School of Chemical and Bioprocess Engineering. Okay, so firstly, you are all very welcome. My name is Katie O'Neill. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager here in the UCD College of Engineering and Architecture in Dublin, Ireland. Schedule-wise today, we are delighted to be joined by Head of School Professor Owen Casey, Program Director, Associate Professor Susan McDonnell, Raymond Principal, Prin Principe, excuse me, um, who is a 2019 graduate of the program, and Niall Kerwin, who is a 2020 graduate of the part-time program. So without further delay, I would like to introduce the head of school, Professor Owen Casey. Hello, everybody. Um, you're very welcome, and thanks for taking the time today. Um, I'm just going to say a few words of introduction. Um, I don't have um, a PowerPoint slide deck, but I just have an image just to share. Um, uh, so, as Katie said, I'm head of school. Um, our school is has been producing graduates since about 60, I think 65 years ago, starting off with the chemical engineering program, evolved into chemical and bioprocess engineering um, with the first sort of developments in that area in the 1980s. So we've been involved in, in biotechnology, biochemical engineering or bioprocessing, whatever you want to call it, since, since the 1980s. Um, and we've grown that area and the master's in biopharmaceutical engineering has been growing and growing. Um, uh, similarly, we have a master's program in chemical engineering as well. And then our, um, so we, uh, we have, I suppose, just to give you some context, or I suppose what sets us apart as a school, I suppose, is our, is our size. Um, we're big enough to have critical mass and um, to, but, but small enough that our class sizes um, are relatively small relative to some other universities with class sizes of maybe 40 to 50 in a lot of cases, sometimes smaller, um, which give very good contact between the students and, and the staff. Um, the, other, the second thing I'd like to point out is our strong industry connection. Um, from the very beginning of chemical engineering in UCD, going back several decades, um, we've always sought to understand industry needs in our programs. Um, and that in turn helps us to evolve our curriculum to meet the needs of industry. And that really, that's really, really important um, so that the students are graduating from our programs when they're going into industry, they're industry ready. And one of the ways we do that as well, that's important in that is through our research. Um, all of the faculty in our school are research active and are working at the cutting edge of chemical and bioprocess engineering. And they're often, very often, working closely with industry on some of those projects. So they have a very, very good understanding of what's happening now and what's happening in the future, um, or what will happen in industry in the future. So again, that helps our graduates to be industry ready. Um, so I've just given you a few minutes of introduction there. Um, I'm available uh, for questions and answers uh, throughout this session. Um, and I'm going to hand back now to, to Katie to introduce the, the next speaker. Oh, and thank you very much for that. I think also a point you made around making sure that the programmes are industry ready and relevant would speak to the fact that 93% of our graduates are either employed or in further study within six months of graduation, uh, which is very important for anyone applying to this programme. So without further delay, I would like to introduce Susan McDonald, who is the Program mm -hmm. Director in Biopharmaceutical Engineering. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I am going to share my uh, screen since I do actually have some slides. So let me first of all just um, thank both Katie and Laura for organizing this. Um, thank you all for attending. It's great to see such numbers that are uh, have already registered there. So as Casey had said, I am the director of the full-time program. So as you'll see, we have the master's in biopharmaceutical engineering, a full-time version, um, and we also have a part-time version. And each of the graduates that we have, um, Raymond is going to talk about the full-time and Niall is a graduate from our part-time program. Um, I think the key thing, and Owen very much said that, that one of the strengths of the school is our interaction with industry. 
And this program was initially set, established really um, to provide a program that I suppose provides students with the skills, training and knowledge. Um, and our program right from the very beginning was for both science graduates, and that includes kind of all disciplines, as well as engineers. And it was very much targeting both the pharma and the biopharma or the biopharmaceutical industry. The full-time program um, has been running since 2010. Um, we've had upwards of about 190 graduates so far. One of the interesting aspects and one of our strengths of the program is that several of the modules are delivered in cooperation with NIBERT, and that stands for the National Institute for Bioprocess Research and Training. And this is a facility that was established by the government, um, and this was to provide training and research and support for the biopharmaceutical industry. And again, Owen had mentioned the class sizes. So our undergraduate classes are typically around 20 students. Our graduate programs, um, last year's class, 2021, we had 20 um, full-time students registered. And you can see there students from Ireland, China, India, and also one from the US. So our typical numbers are anything from 20 to about 24 students. And again, the program is very much built on, I suppose, the biomanufacturing, as we now say in Ireland. Um, Ireland has representatives of all top 10 pharmaceutical companies in the world. We have 75 plus biopharmaceutical companies represented here with over 20 biomanufacturing facilities. So these are facilities that are starting off right from the cells, manufacturing the drug product, doing all the formulation, the fill finish. So they're doing all aspects of the actual manufacturing. There has been around a 12 billion investment in the last decade. Um, some of the recent, I suppose, companies that have started um, production in Ireland um, are Wuxi, who are one of the largest biotech companies in China. Um, about 30,000 people and, as you can see, a substantial amount um, in exports. And only last week, there was an announcement, a very exciting announcement for Ireland, in that Pfizer, who currently manufacture um, a drug for treating uh, rheumatoid arthritis, an antibody drug, um, they are going to invest 40 million and they will actually be manufacturing COVID-19 vaccine. Um, and they expect to finish kind of modification and kind of developing the site by the end of this year. And they're hoping to start producing COVID-19 vaccine in obviously collaboration with the BioNTech um, by early next year. So that's a very exciting development. At the moment, a lot of the biomanufacturing in Ireland is based around um, antibodies or MABs. Um, there are some enzymes. We have one company, Takeda, who are manufacturing a cell therapy. We have quite a number who are involved in traditional kind of vaccine developments. Um, things like conjugate vaccines, but obviously the COVID-19 will be a very interesting one. These are just some of the companies that have employed our kind of recent graduates. Um, again, you can see some of the major pharma companies, Pfizer, uh, BMS, um, MSD, also quite a number of what we would call kind of consultancy design companies, uh, PM, Jacobs, DPS. Um, so again, quite a good representation across the board. In terms of the actual programme structure, um, there are obviously lots of information on the school website and you can obviously see, you can actually have a look at the modules and the module content. I think one of our, I suppose, strengths is the fact that the modules are delivered by obviously the school academic staff, but we also have quite a number of industrial experts who deliver modules in specific areas. Um, similar to all of these Top master's programs in UCD. We have 90 credits. We have 12 lecture modules, and this is in the first and second trimester. And then in the summer trimester, um, students do a 12 week either research or design project. And I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but again, our focus is very much on biomanufacturing, very much on using in particular mammalian cells, since this is really the strength in Ireland. Um, the modules are focused on the upstream part, 
um, on the downstream part. We also have modules and things like facility design, Lean Sigma, modules on things like tech transfer, um, as well as some of the kind of fundamental modules, things like the cell culture, biopharmaceutical engineering. So again, our modules are very much focused on the biomanufacturing. And I think this is why our graduates then are successful in getting jobs. Now, there may be a few students who are either attending today, and um, hopefully are even students who will watch the recording later on. Um, as I said right at the very beginning, we have a full-time version, which I've just talked about, and we also have a part-time version. And the program, program director for the part-time program is my colleague, Professor Niall Barron, who, as well as being an academic staff within the school, is also one of the principal investigators in NIBERT, which I actually mentioned. Now, the part-time program actually has been running since 2006. Um, and initially, in those early years, it was kind of run at the same time as the full-time. Um, but in 2019, so two years ago, we actually set up a standalone part-time program. And this is really for people who are working full-time um, and the program is delivered over two years. Um, this year we have 23 students who are in year one and we have 24 students who are actually in year two. Um, and similar to the full-time program, there are 12 lecture modules and then also in their second year, they do the research project as well over the summer. And what makes the part-time program, I suppose, different um, and I suppose flexible or available for people who are working full-time is that all of the lectures are on Friday afternoons from 2 to 6 p.m. in the actual Nybert facility. The module content, and it's all in our brochures, um, we have some of the modules are the same as in the full-time program, but we do have additional modules, particularly in commissioning and qualification. So just to give you an idea of some of the jobs and some of the kind of job titles, um, I've listed just kind of some recent graduates here um, from our class, our most recent class who graduated in 2020. Um, as you can see, some are working in, as a CQU engineer in PN, um, a biotech specialist in Biomarin, um, somebody's also doing a PhD in UCD. Um, from 2019, Raymond is going to talk as a representative of a full-time program. And again, you can see students working in MSD, Regeneron, various, various other aspects. Um, over the years, we've had quite a number of students who are interested in coming to Ireland, um, doing the program for a year, not only just to get knowledge and skills in biopharmaceutical engineering, but sometimes to also look at doing a PhD in the area. And that's quite a number of students have taken that um, aspect. Um, again, right from the very beginning, we have links with industry. And obviously we're involved in obviously trying to get good jobs for our students. UCD has a very good um, career development center. Um, in the first trimester, we have sessions on preparing CVs and cover letters. We also, in the second trimester, there's an opportunity to do some mock interviews and interview preparations. Um, the school organizes its own networking and careers fairs. And there's also a central um, science, engineering, and technology recruitment fair, which is held generally in September of each year. Um, just to kind of summarize really the strengths of the program, as we said, pharma, biopharma are major industries in Ireland. Since Ireland is a hub for biomanufacturing, um, the program is delivered by both academic and industrial lecturers. The school, as our head of school also said, has major and very strong ties with these companies. As Katie mentioned, we have very high employment rates, and um, particularly for students who come from non-EU countries and who avail of the two-year internship visa after that. Uh, quite a number of our graduates have also been interested in pursuing PhDs, um, and we've been successful in that. I think that's me done. Um, this is just, these will be in the slides and in the information. It was just to give you an idea of some of the staff that are involved. Um, and then, oops, let me just 
pull up to my last slide. So this is from the graduation, I think two years ago. Um, and if you have any questions, obviously you can ask me obviously in the chat. Um, but in addition, if you want to ask specific questions or looking for advice about particular things, um, my email address is there. So I think that's it. Thank you very much. I will stop sharing my screen. Susan, thanks a million. And what a lovely photo to finish up on as well. And um, standing with all, all your recent yeah. graduates, it's wonderful <laughs> to see. Uh, we're very lucky to be joined by Raymond, who is a 2019 graduate of the full-time biopharmaceutical engineering master's. And he is currently a UCD PhD student as well. Um, and I believe he's taking a slight break from the lab work as I see him there. And he's going to share his experiences with us today. Thanks, Million Raymond. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Laura and Susan, for inviting me on this um, uh, webinar. Um, yeah, so I'm a 2019 graduate two years ago. Um, I'm currently actually doing PhD now with, uh, with associate professor Su Susan McDonald, actually, on her lab. So that's a very interesting um, turn of events for me uh, my career-wise. Um, in the background towards the, the course itself, I did the full-time course. So um, I, my background before my undergrad was mostly uh, molecular biology or biotechnology. So um, there's a lot of engineering involved on the, uh, on the course itself. So it was kind of um, very um, interesting to work into the, the course itself and to learn a lot of things. But then again, I was looking for um, an inter because I was very interested in working in the biopharmaceutical background. So, so in the kind of way, I was kind of looking for a course um, that's related to working to biopharmaceutical industry. So I found this course, which is the, the course that we have now um, offered is the, it's a really nice, um, wonderful course actually, because I had like uh, my, uh, my foot on the door for the, for career opportunities in the biopharmaceutical industries. And it's really nice to be involved, uh, to learn a lot from, from it. So uh, and teaching and to overall, in my experience, the teaching aspect is actually very, um, very intensive in the same time, very, um, very fun to actually learn from it because like um, it's, they gave you a lot of, as Susan has already told you and Laura they said that um, the, the school is very integrated with a lot of um, in industry and as, as well as like uh, the national NIBERT, which is the national bi uh, bioprocessing research. So you kind of have this kind uh, in affiliation that um, to the background on what's happening or what's uh, the design or project uh, involved or things involved in the bi biopharmaceutical facilities. So uh, the the facets that you will learn actually from this course is a lot of um, you know um, design projects, a lot of like regulatory um, involvement in the industries itself, which is kind of like um, like um, a really good insight into working into the environment. Um, so you, all of the lectures actually, especially in the first semester, um, you kind of learn a lot of principles, especially from my background, which is mostly um, biotechnology. But the thing is like, they'll, uh, they'll actually, um, um, what you call this, make you learn a lot more of engineering as well. And the, in the, there's an option for you to do if you wanna do, uh, if your background is mostly engineering or mostly biology part, um, the, the actual the course offers kind of like very principal background into them, so it doesn't really matter if you don't have each one because the the course is very balanced and normalized in the sense that you can actually learn a lot from um, from different backgrounds if you if you apply for the course. So um, and it's a very interesting because there's a lot of uh, lecturers who have different. Um, expertise that you will learn from. So you have, like uh, I said, uh, facility design from NIBERT, uh, a lot of um, like analytical uh, techniques that you will learn that the, they, they use in the facilities, um, a lot of bioreactor designing and modeling, which is a very interesting area for me. Um, yeah, so for, for WISE, uh, for me, uh, in my class, uh, we have 18 people in our group. So um, 
in my area, um, because you have a choice on the summer project if you want to do a design project or a research. For my area, because I have kind of like intensive research background, I went for mostly into um, the uh, process design project, which is kind of like you're separated into groups, uh, a smaller group, like five or four. And it's very, it's kind of like a, a very fun group to work with if you're doing a bio, uh, if you're doing a design project, because you kind of like work along in a group, which is like you would expect if you're working in an industry is to have a, a teamwork um, kind of scenario to design or like um, to modify some uh, uh, by process um, criteria that you have to learn from the from the industries itself. So that's very interesting for me. Um, in my class, especially, uh, we got like, I think 70% of people or 80% even or more got a lot, uh, job by this stage in, from their career after finishing. Uh, and most of them are in Ireland, to be honest. And I know a lot of international students as well having a chance to, um, in my class, having a chance to work as well in, um, in different parts of Ireland for uh, in different companies. So that's very interesting. Um, yeah, so yeah, the only thing that I, I want to get off with, uh, from my point of view anyway, is that, um, the course itself is very application approach to, um, the designing and the layout of, um, of the things that you have to learn. So it's very, um, technical in that sense. So it's really, for me, uh, it's very opening to just learn a lot of things um from the perspective of in the facility side if you're going to work in the biopharmaceutical industries so yeah so at this point um after i finished um i'm working now with my phd with susan so it's kind of interesting turn event for me because uh, i did really enjoy my design project and now i'm going to do um has a lot of research now so it's interesting yeah, so um, I'll let you, I'll let Laura uh, introduce the other person for me. Thanks, Raymond. It was really interesting to hear your experience and where you've got on to since your graduation. Um, next up, we're going to introduce Niall Curran, who is a 2020 graduate of the part time biopharmaceutical engineering masters. Thanks, Niall. Hey, Lauren. Uh, firstly, just like to thank Lauren and Susan for having me here today. I'm very excited to talk to everyone and kind of share my experience that I had doing this master's in biopharmaceutical engineering. I'm just going to see if I can open up my slides here and just share them here. Um, I think I've just been disabled from sharing my screen. If the host can just enable that. Sorry about that. Just give no me problem. one second. Yeah. That should work for you now. Perfect. Perfect. Can everyone see my slides now? That's perfect. Thanks, perfect. Niall. No problem at all. So what I'll do is I'll just give you a very quick background into myself. So I studied um, mechanical engineering in DCU. And from there, I worked in kind of more traditional manufacturing, kind of heavy or highly automated kind of pack machines, robotics, molding machines. So very generalized manufacturing. And in 2017, then I kind of made the decision that I wanted to get into the biopharmaceutical industry. And um, I guess some of the reasons behind that, and to be fair, Susan has touched on it. Um, in 2017, there was a massive explosion, a huge amount of excitement in the industry. We had all the projects like BMS, Alexian, we had MS and D, um, where I'm currently working now. You had Wuji Biologics and all these um, project startups um, and we're beginning and um, you know my partners from uh, Pfizer she works as a quality assurance specialist so you know it definitely seemed like an industry that was booming in Ireland there was plenty of progression and plenty of opportunity and that was one of the reasons why I decided to look at progressing into that industry and looking at what kind of academic um, resources and courses were available so the reason why I chose this master's um, for, you know, there's a number of reasons. First of all, the course was well recognized um, by pharma giants such as Pfizer, MSD um, and Takeda. You know, from research in the master's, to me, it gave a fantastic holistic overview of all the different areas within the biopharma industry. And, um, you know, Susan's talked about it, such as bioanalytics, you know, um, 
facility design, regulatory affairs, and you've got you know general biopharmaceutical engineering, animal cell culture design, bioreactor design. So it, it definitely covered everything from end to end from the biopharmaceutical industry, from the process itself, all to the, I guess, support groups around that. And um, you know, going to the info session, I still remember now back in 2017, and, um, you know, speaking with Susan, you know, I am a mechanical engineer by trade. So I didn't back then have that biological um, background. I never did biology for the leaving So I, I didn't know anything about cells. I didn't know what CHO cells were and how, you know, intricate they were to the entire process. Um, but, you know, I got a great feel that this was a course that, you know, anyone from any background, from any facet of life, um, you know, could undertake and could excel at. And, um, you know, there's some great level four option courses and, you know, some great uh, bridging gaps. Um, and, you know, all the lectures were very flexible and very accommodating. And I think, you know, the courses as, as a whole, it's it kind of, um, you know, gears itself to people with all different experiences and, and allows them to excel. In terms of managing the master's workload, so I did do it part time and um, I did it in such a way where I could take a year gap in the middle and I could travel to Australia and do a bit of traveling there. But the great thing was, is I was able to take my studies with me um, and allowed me to actually get a job um, in pharma in Australia with, with the background that I just done in uh, completing half of the master's, um, which was fantastic. You know, talking to some of the part timers that were doing it, um, you know, with full time work and with family, they always said that the assignments and the workload was well spread out throughout the semester. You know, from day one, they would come in and the lectures would explain to them what the objectives were and, you know, what assignments were on the list, when those assignments would be taking place, the breakdown of those CAs and how much percentage was geared to them. Um, and then, you know, again, from week one, they could kind of look at their schedule then for the next 12 to 15 weeks and say, OK, you know, these are the CAs I have coming up. These are the work commitments I need to make um, and look at best scheduling them. Um, again, you know, this I was doing it back then when the full time and the part time master's calendars kind of aligned on the same week and the same dates. Um, but even still, a lot of the part timers felt like it was very flexible. And, um, you know, a lot of the lectures were very accommodating, especially with work commitments and upcoming CAs and exams. But now, as, as Susan was saying, you know, the lectures are bundled into one afternoon on a Friday, making it far more uh, feasible and flexible um, to work around. If there's one top tip I could give that one colleague gave to me now that he, he thought was fantastic was that, you know, from the very start, um, especially trying to do this part time and um, with a full time um, job and a family, you know, he sat down um, with his manager, he sat down with his wife. And because, you know, um, this course was so well organized, he could see and had full transparency in what the next 12 to 15 weeks would look like. So then he could work out how he was going to work around his you know, family commitments and also his work schedule with his manager. So he could, he could tie in around, say, you know, week six and seven, I got a few CAs coming up. So then he could kind of, you know, lift the throttle off his work. But then maybe week eight and nine, he wouldn't have too many CAs. So then he could, you know, give back those extra hours. Um, and he felt it was, it was, it was fantastic. In terms of you know the overall delivery of the course, I think there's a lovely balance between uh, continuous assessment and exams, and um, especially for continuous assessment because for me, my the way I learn is through kind of more self-taught uh, continuous assessments instead of trying to memorize uh, notes that I'm later going to forget two weeks. Um, and you know those self-taught CAs, I still have them to this day. They're up on my Google Drive, and I'm always referring to them on a, on a weekly basis. Um, in terms of you know the hands-on experience that you gain from Nybert, I think it's it's absolutely invaluable. And um, even some of the interviews that I would have done in the summer now, you know, everyone knew that the Nybert was part of this master's, and they were always really excited to understand, you know, how did I find it? What did I learn? Um, how did I? Uh, uh, what experience did I gain from it? What technologies did I learn? And um, because you know a week in Nybert, it, it's invaluable. And um, you know the experiences and the knowledge that you gain, it's it's absolutely brilliant. You can take it forward with you. Um, Susan mentioned about, you know, the modules um, are some of them are taught by industry lectures, which again, I think is invaluable. It's, it's excellent because, you know, not only are you learning from these industry experts, you know, you're, you're getting an insight into an industry that you wouldn't get to until you're actually in it yourself. Um, and you can kind of ask some of the tough questions that you might necessarily ask in an interview and, and get a real grasp of what it is to like or what it is to work uh, in this industry from day one. Um, and, you know, just pick their brains, which is great. And, you know, listen, it's also great for networking. Um, it's, it's one of the reasons why I got my job in MSD. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later. In terms of the course content, there's, you know, it's a huge amount of the course is applicable from day one. Um, 
it's 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 absolutely fantastic as, as i was saying you know you've got facility design you've got regulatory affairs bioanalytical separations and so forth i'm not, I'm not going to go into too much detail but the thing is is that it gives you a fantastic foundation from day one um you know i remember getting a tour of the downstream purification process in ms and d and you know they'd be asking questions and, and giving us you know great insight into it but the fantastic thing is I, you know for the very best of my knowledge i knew a good bit of the answers before they were even getting into it because the course had given me that foundation i understood why they uh, picked certain processes over others because i had done the facility design or why say some of the chromatography columns which is uh, one uh, part of the unit operation why they were sized that way because i'd done some of the calculations so it was just great just to have that um, knowledge, you know, going into it, because, you know, as I said, I'd, I'd done mechanical engineering and that's a very broad degree. So, you know, it, you just, you don't have that, you know, level of tacit uh, details, um, I guess, theory that I would have had going into this industry because of this master's. Um, and, and, you know, I have to say, you know, the, the notes that I've taken away from that, from this master's are fantastic. I'm constantly reading over them at least once a week um, because of, they're just so applicable. Um, in terms of how this course has helped me, as I said, you know, it's, it's taught by industry lectures and, you know, that, you know, was very beneficial for me. And one of those industry lectures actually put me forward for a role in MS&D and, and, and I was lucky enough to get it. And um, so that, that does say a lot, even in the interview process, um, you know, for MSD, as well as for two other pharma giants, um, you know, they both, rec or sorry, the three of them both recognize the masses that I do, and it's, uh, you know, very highly sought after and um, two of those um you know pharma giants msd and pfizer they both sponsor their employees to do this particular masters and i think that speaks volumes and um, you know that's that's the true um that's the true um, evidence as they say um as i said you know the course is highly recognized by pharma giants and you know as i said you can see that from that interview process more importantly as well what's helped me is that as i was saying the knowledge that i've gained from this as i was saying you know i went in on that tour and you know i understood why sorry the why's behind why we were doing it this way in terms of our downstream process and that's truly helped me and given me a solid foundation now in terms of my day role as a production specialist in downstream ops and you know if, if it wasn't for this masters um, i genuinely wouldn't be in the job i am today and i don't think i will have a successful career as i'm hoping to have because of it and um, so you know for me without a shadow of a doubt i would definitely recommend this course to anyone doing it and listen i'll leave it there guys thanks very much i'll give it back to yourself laura Thanks a million, Niall. That was really interesting. And I've no doubt that both Susan and Owen will be delighted to hear that you are still uh, referring to your notes. Yeah, uh, which is great to hear that they're still applicable. Um, I might ask everyone to turn back on their cameras and their mics because we have a number of questions that have been coming in and we'll try and get through as many as possible um, over the next number of minutes. So just bear with me one moment and I'll pull up the questions. What type of softwares would students would students get to use, e.g. SuperPro, AutoCAD, CAD, MATLAB? I'm not sure who wants to answer that question, either when the students or the <laughs> academics. Um, I, I think I might have preempted things by answering some of the questions already. But I said, was wondering where they disappeared. I'll find them. Don't worry. <laughs> my fault. I thought anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to leave that to both Raymond and Owen. Since Raymond, yeah. what, what does um, you scan you use for the bioreactor? Uh, G, it's G, G Proms, um, which probably has some similarities with MATLAB, um, probably a little easier to use. Um, it's for the module of bioreactor modeling and control. Um, we also have a module on data analytics. Oh okay. yeah, so um, yeah, so Colin Clark is delivering that module. He uses um, he uses um, OR. Um, it's it's a software. It's a code a coding language called OR, uh, which is not too dissimilar to a lot of other coding languages like Python and things like that. I do okay. add though. Um, we do use like um, stuff. I mean like programs for drawing processes. So it's like you can use lucid charts. And uh, for me, I kind of made the initiative to learn AutoCAD as well for the first process design. Thanks for that. Um, oh, and a question for yourself, someone with an undergraduate in electronics and communications, can they apply for yeah. the MNGSC in chemical engineering? 
Yeah, I tried to answer that, but I think I pressed the wrong button. Um, the answer is, hmm, I don't know for sure. There's not enough information there. I, I suspect probably not. Um, maybe contacting the program director directly on that one might, might wait a bit more information than what's in the question would probably be good. Uh, you know, there's there's a level of industrial experience there that might mitigate things, but um, I think the best thing is to contact the program director. Um, so what we can do is Laura can pop both my email address and her own email address into the chat and anyone is welcome to email us directly. I know from dealing directly with the program director on applicants, Professor Niall English, that he is quite strict and would generally look for an undergraduate in the chemical engineering. Um, however, if there's other mitigating factors, we can, of course, look at it. A question for yourself, Susan, on behalf of Niall, um, is it possible to complete the part-time master's remotely? So I think I answered that, but just in case it's a similar question. So one of the strengths of our standalone part-time is the face-to-face -face delivery. We made that decision. Um, and in bringing people to Nybird for four hours on a Friday, anybody who's working full time, it gave them a focus and it made use of that Friday afternoon. Now, obviously, this year we had to deliver our modules online. Some students, some students are really suited. A lot of them really missed kind of coming and the interaction with other students. Um, our hope is that we will obviously go back. We will be back in person in September. Um, but I think we will explore the possibility of recording some of the lectures because a lot of times, you know, students can't make every Friday. Something happens in work and they, so having the lectures pre-recorded is good, but our main focus would be in person, would be face-to-face. -face. I don't know whether Niall would want to say something about that, maybe. Yeah, I was just actually going to say, it, as, as a student, you know, who originally would have done this master's face to face, and then obviously when COVID hit there last year, um, you know, to be fair to yourself, Susan, and all the um, lectures as well, you know, th we, de we definitely mitigated, I guess, some of the issues around COVID, you know, adapting very quickly. Um, but I definitely am one of those students that kind of loves that face to face, you know, it, it just gives you a more personal feel and you can ask those questions that you might necessarily get by watching a, you know, a pre recorded um, lecture. Um, and also, as I would say, you know, now that I'm working, when you're in work, it's very hard to kind of disconnect by getting yourself into Nybert and, and doing those classes, you kind of park work to one side and you can kind of really get involved. And I, I definitely would see face to face important. And I understand what you're saying, Susan, about making things more flexible. I, I think, you know, definitely prioritize the face to face. And, you know, naturally, if, if, if needs be, then you can watch pre recorded if, you know, that once off Friday where you have, you have work um, assignments that you can't miss. But face to face is where I'm at. Thank you very much. Laura, a question for yourself. When do the applications start for September 2022 start? And also, are there any scholarships available for applicants? Yeah, sure. So we start our application process as a year prior to um, commencing your studies. So for September 2022, they'll open October 1st of this year. So October 1st of 2021. Um, so we'll take applications. Um, we have rolling deadlines, so we don't have an official closing date for a program. So we um, we close the applications down when we reach capacity. Um, so for popular programs like the biopharmaceutical, pharmaceutical, we always advise um, applicants to get their applications as soon as they can. So October 1st this year um, would be a date that should stick in people's mind if they're looking for September 2022. And then you asked about scholarships, was it? Yes. Yeah, so we have a number of non-EU um, scholarships available as well. So for students who are applicants who are who are non-EU, um, you can apply for um, a Global Excellence Scholarship um, and also college scholarships. So the Global Excellence that are a slightly higher level of 50% to 100% tuition cover, um, but they are quite rare and they're for top level students, but you can make an application to those once you have an offer for a program. And then we also have college level scholarships that are slightly less as well. So they're just tuition scholarships. Um, and then, you have to, as I said, you have to have an offer for a program before you can start making an application to those. Excellent. And it's worth mentioning that the scholarships are only available for full time non EU students. Um, Susan, this might be for you. Um, may I ask, do you consider professional experience as a matrix for admission to this course? <clears throat> so if you're again, this really depends on if you're applying really for the full time and the part time. There was a similar question. Um, from somebody else um, about kind of qualifications or whatever. So for the full-time programme, 
And for all UCD programmes, the qualification entry is a level eight degree, which is, and anyway, level eight degree. But in terms of the part-time, we often have students who are, you know, working 20 years in industry and came from a level seven um, background. And in those students for the part-time, a level seven plus five years experiential learning. Um, and Katie will know from looking at some of our applicants, we often have people who come from, somebody emailed me there about polymer science background, but maybe then somebody who's worked in the industry. So we would take that into account in their application as well. Thanks, Susan. And this might be either for Susan or Owen. Um, and it probably really depends on the career direction they want to take, but they're asking for someone who's got an undergrad in chemical engineering, is a master's in biopharmaceutical engineering better than a master's in chemical engineering? Um, my answer, well, I'll answer, I mean, it depends on where you want to work. Um, if you want to work in Ireland, if you want to work internationally, what your interests are. Um, I, I wouldn't like to say one is better than the other, um, but um, I suppose in Ireland, the huge amount of the employment in for chemical or biopharmaceutical engineering is in the um, is in the biopharmaceutical sector, pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical sector. That's where a lot of the job creation has been in Ireland. But at the same time, you know, uh, chemical engineering graduates go into other areas as well. Um, there, there are there are other um, good employment opportunities outside of the pharmaceutical area, I suppose. Um, um, and you know, uh, I don't have the statistics, um, but there are in the area of energy, for example, and, and in the area of I suppose materials, um, and particularly in the area of energy, um, there are some opportunities. I think we see uh, a lot of future employment growth in the energy area in the, the transition to transition over to um, you know non-fossil based technologies renewable energy related and chemical engineering engineers have an important role to play in that um, so it's hard to be definitive but just to give you a bit of context about Ireland I suppose and the employment opportunities in Ireland thanks for that Owen um, someone is asking, with the full-time programme, Susan, um, is there any flexibility in order to work part-time? Yes, and I was just in the process of answering that. I, I like go and I was just struggling how to, anyway, how to send it. So typically um, each trimester has six modules and for most modules, it's about two hours contact. Um, so you have 12 hours contact. A lot of students, as part of your student visa, you are allowed to work 20 hours per week. Um, so a lot of students do work, particularly at the weekends. Um, within the second trimester, the modules are kind of, um, kind of, I you know, conjugated Mondays and Fridays. So there's definitely time and there's definitely flexibility. Um, you know, obviously, as against that, sometimes students end up doing more than 20 hours and then that's when it becomes tricky and that they're working so much, they don't have time to work on the assignments. Um, at the beginning of the trimester, it all seems grand. And then before you know it, you're in week three or four, and all of a sudden you have like four deadlines, and then it's week eight and you have everything coming at you. So yes, you can work part-time. It's important how many hours is important in your balance. And both Niall and Raymond are both smiling. So I know definitely Raymond worked as well during his full-time full year. So maybe they they probably better place to answer that question, Raymond. Yeah, I was working weekends actually when I was doing the master. So um, it was very manageable because you kind of have like a, a gap in the, in the the during the week to actually um, to revise and doing everything. So it's actually very flexible. The, the transfer of the courses and the lectures so. yeah no i'd have to agree with raymond as well as i was the same so like as susan said a lot of the modules would be kind of conjugated into say mondays or fridays or or tuesdays wednesdays morning and then you, you know i guess if you kind of just went on the approach of just making sure that you're at your lectures monday friday and you did all your study monday friday then you could have the weekends to do part-time work i know also one of my friends who did the course with me george and last year susan mentioned about him he's a biotech specialist now 
and he again worked um part time as well on the weekends and just it's just about balancing it and um, i think up to 20 hours is probably enough anymore as susan says it does get tricky because uh, you know as she said the first couple of weeks are fine and then things start to pile up and that's where you need to be organized but yeah 100 percent sounds like organization is the key to being able to balance that as well um, I'll just answer this question. Someone has said, is it possible to get 90 credits in one year full of study? So the MNSC in chemical engineering is a 90 credit 12 month master's, as is the full time version of this biopharmaceutical engineering master's. So the answer to that is yes. Um, someone else also asking about the scholarships. Laura has mentioned that. So we do have the global scholarships and the college scholarships. You need to have an offer or a conditional offer. You need to be a non-EU student applying for a full-time program. If you need further details, you can contact myself and Laura. I'm sorry that we haven't got through all the questions today. I think we've answered the ones that came up most frequently. So hopefully you have all the answers that you are looking for. Left for me to say is to thank the head of school, Owen Casey, very much. Program director, Susan McDonnell. Our two um, alumni, Nal Kerwin and Raymond Principe and my colleague, Laura Egan O'Brien. Thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. And we look forward to you studying in UCD in the near future. Many thanks. <laughs>